Welcome to the only beginner guide you're going to need for Blender. This is the second video in my series of how to use Blender. The first one just shows you how to download it. If you don't know how to do that, uh, there will be a card in the top right hand corner. You can go ahead and watch that video and then come back to this and we will be getting started right now on the basics of Blender. So go ahead and just click anywhere so that menu closes out. We don't need it right now. Let's get started. So first we're going to look at navigation of Blender. So Blender might look a little bit overwhelming when you first open it but do not worry because you don't really have to use most of these buttons all the time and uh, it'll all make sense in a little bit. So it all starts with the viewport here, which lets us see all of the objects that are currently in our project. And we can select any one of these by clicking on it. And if you've used a game engine like Roblox Studio before, you'll understand that this is very similar in to selecting objects in a game engine. Blender's a little different, but if you've used a game engine before, this will be very easy. So to look around in Blender, we all we do is click the middle mouse button and drag it around. And this will let us, you know, look around the viewport and uh, look at our different objects. If we hold shift and do the same exact thing, middle mouse click and just move your mouse around. Now we can actually move side to side, up and down, all of that. And this is how we get around in Blender. Um, there's also a couple other ways to get around, but this is the main one. You're not really going to use the other ones unless you're doing renders, which you can change. Uh, you can like walk around your camera up here. We can go to view and then go to navigation and choose walk navigation. So we can actually use AWSD, but this you can't really stay in this mode. So if you click, it'll go back to the normal one. But I wouldn't really recommend using that unless you're trying to render something. All right, next, let's get into transforming objects. So transforming objects in object mode, which is what we're in right now. Object mode is where we see all our items here, like our cube, our light, our camera. Blender has the basic options that you'll need for moving around on objects, like move, rotate, duplicate, and we can also change the visibility of objects by clicking H or clicking the eyeball right here. We can click it and hide it or show it in the viewport. And we also have rendering modes, which I'll get into a little bit later. So yeah, so to move objects in Blender, we have we do have these options right here, which you, they have like handles for movement, which are very similar to game engines. Now, I really wouldn't recommend using these because they're just not as quick as the keybinds. Most people when in Blender, they use the keybind G, which is it stands for grab in Blender. We can do G and we can move it based on our camera. If we t uh, press G and then click X, Y, or Z, we can move it on an axis. And as you'll notice, the red line, any red line generally means the X axis. If we click Y, that's usually the green line, and that'll move it on the Y axis. And then we have finally Z. If you press Z, it'll move it on the Z axis, which usually is a blue line in Blender. So yeah, if we click Control Z, as in most programs, we can undo stuff, by the way. Now, yeah, moving is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And if you guys want to move in like steps, so you see this grid here on in Blender, you can actually click G, you can hold Control, and you can actually move it in steps. Control, see? And then if we want to move it a lot slower and a lot more careful, you can actually just hold shift and it'll move it a lot slower. So you can do very precise movements of things. And yeah, so that's that. And next is rotation. Rotation in Blender. Just like the movement, we have a gizmo we can use, which is uh, the rotate gizmo. Um, this really, I, I as as with moving, I would not recommend using this unless like you're doing something very specific where this is helpful. But generally, you want to use the keybind R for rotate and and we can rotate it based on our camera's axis. This is usually not that useful, but if we want to rotate it in a little bit better way, we can, as usual, use the keybinds X, Y, and Z to change the axis that we are rotating on. And by the way, if you want to cancel something, you want to right click it and it will exit that movement operation. So R and we can start moving it. If we don't want to do anything, right click. If we want to confirm it, you left click. So if we click R, Z, we can rotate it on the Z axis. We click R, X, we can rotate it on the X axis. And same for Y, if we click R, Y, we can rotate it on the Y axis. Now, if we want to delete an object, we can just select it and click X and click delete. And now movement in Blender generally 
is based on these axes. Now, each object can have its own rotation, right? So if we rotate this on the X axis a little bit, then click R and then Y and rotate this on the Y axis. Now, if we move this on the Z axis, G and then Z, this is going to be moving on the like the axis that blender has for it so if we want to move something locally on its own axis so right now it's going to move in its own direction if we do this if we click g and then zz it'll move in its own z axis its own z axis and if we want to just do this by default we can also i mean we can also do this on other things like x if we did that g x x we can uh move it on its own x axis if we do the same thing for y of course g y y it'll move on its own y axis you get the point but we can also do this normally we can we can leave it like that if, if we click comma and we go ahead and choose local it will always move on its local axis which is more helpful in edit mode which is what we're going to get into next which is where we actually get into modeling objects and actually editing them so i'm going to switch this back by clicking a comma and going back to global and i'm going to go ahead and undo all of this so we have a basic cube and i'm going to go ahead and box select and select these and click x and delete oh yeah i forgot there's one last thing we need to do shift a shift a that lets us add different meshes so we can go to mesh you can choose cylinder and in the bottom left here there's going to be a panel that lets you change the options on it so as you can see right now this is kind of hidden so if we want to go ahead and see through this cube we can click shift z and we'll be able to see through it. Uh, there's also other modes. So if we go up here to the top right, we can actually change the rendering mode. And this is um, X-ray mode. So we can actually see through it without it, it having that wireframe look. That's a lot of information all at once. But basically all we're doing is just changing the view so we can see through it. And now we can edit the options on our cylinder, which we just added into our game. So we can change the vertices. And vertices are points in Blender in 3D space. It is just a point in 3D space. And each one, of, each mesh is made up of vertices so um the number of vertices that make up this top circle here can be changed so that it, it's more simple and it makes the whole cylinder more simple so we can just reduce the number of faces this has by using this so three vertices as you can see one two three if we increase this to 12 for example that is a much more low poly mesh and if we do this and we are making this for a game there are a lot of tricks we can do to actually hide that this is such a low quality i mean low poly mesh once we actually edit it and work on it a little bit so if you're working on a game engine you want to make things as low poly as possible in general you might want to be a little bit higher than 12 on, in some cases so like 14 but yeah so i'm going to go ahead and delete that cylinder because we aren't going to be needing it but if you do shift a again we can actually add a lot of things like an ico sphere which lets us you know add one of these spheres which has a triangulated surface if we add the uv sphere it'll be a surface covered in square the actual like uh quad so yeah if we go ahead and x and delete this let's get into edit mode finally so if we go ahead oh yeah let's turn off x-ray and if we go ahead and click tab we can enter edit mode and if we press that again it'll go right back out of edit mode so that we can view the mesh in object mode again so the difference between edit mode and object mode is that edit mode lets you edit the mesh it lets you edit an object and we can edit all its vertices we can move them around with g same keybinds we can rotate although you can't really rotate a vertice if we select multiple by box selecting and dragging we can click r z and we can rotate this and yeah so we right click we can reset it all the keybinds are the same but there are a couple there are a lot more that we need to look at um if we go ahead and click one two or three on our keyboard you'll see up here this will change so if we click one two three one two three this up here lets us change to selecting vertices edges and faces and one two three on our keyboard lets us select a specific one and we can choose to select faces vertices or edges and you can also you, you can use this menu up here by just clicking on it so if we choose face select by clicking three or clicking this button we can click on a face and we can move it with G we can do G Z and we can move it up and then here's where another keybind comes in we can scale so we can click S to scale something and you can just move your mouse in and out and we can kind of scale it and change the size and you can also do that in object mode for an entire object if you want so if we click S, we can scale it. So yeah, and if we move this down with G, Z, and then we scale it. Oh yeah, you can also scale. You can scale on the X axis. 
Y axis and on the Z axis. Next is extrude. So if we want to go ahead and extrude, which basically just, I'll show you what extrude does. So if you click E on your keyboard, you can extrude and that lets us create this extrusion. So right now we got a little bit of a pillar going. And if we click E again, click, and if we click S, scale that, if we click E and do that, and we could select this bottom face, click E and do that. So yeah, as you can see, those, the, it's not too hard once you get into it. And there's a lot of cool key binds. If you uh, go to two, if you click two, so we can go to edge select and if we hold alt and click on an edge we can actually select a line of edges which is a pretty cool feature and let's do that so let's do shift alt shift alt and click on that edge and then on the final one shift alt and click and yeah there we go so if you click control b this is where the next thing comes in control b is bevel and bevel will bevel the edges so control b and we can move that as much as we want and we can bevel it as much as we want on the edges and yeah click to confirm right click to cancel as usual beveling is one of the most amazing features in blender it's really useful so yeah next is subdivide so you know each face in blender is generally cut up into different triangles squares but if we right click and click subdivide that'll cut it into the next divisible amount of faces so if we click one face it'll cut it up into four if we were to click more if we were to click four faces and subdivide them well now we'd have 16 it uh, squares the amount of faces so next we can do loop cuts which lets us make a cut and it adds a bunch of edges so if we do control r on our keyboard control r we can do a loop cut and this will let us cut anywhere on our mesh so we can click anywhere and we can loop cut it if you click s you can scale that and click control r g z you know we can do that and yeah we got a little bit of like a pillar going or maybe a stand for like a ancient uh scroll or something so that's looking pretty cool if we go ahead and go back into edit mode i exited it click three on your keyboard to go back to face select and select this top face we can click I and that'll inset it. Now, if we go too far, this will start looking weird. So don't go too far. We'll to make sure you have those edges on the end. And we can inset this face. And if we go ahead and click E, extrude that in, we can actually extrude into it. And that makes a little cutout here. And yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of really cool features in Blender. The next one that I want to look at is a knife tool. So you can go to the knife tool by clicking K and you can click on any old edge and you can cut it up. It's really useful when you're trying to adjust how a face is made up because you can end up with end gons like this. So uh, an end gon is any face that has more than four vertices. So if we have five vertices, um, this has a lot more than four vertices. So uh, generally, people like to do this and you click enter to confirm it. Click K, uh, you know, do that. K, enter, K, click, click, enter. There we go. Now, this is no longer an end gone and it's pretty well set up. All right. So now, first, I'm not really liking what, uh, this model here. So let's go ahead and exit this. Click X and delete whatever our demonstration model is looking like for you. Let's go ahead and make something cool. Let's make a mug. So click Shift A. Let's add a cylinder let's set the vertices to something like 10 for what i'm about to demonstrate it's very important this is low and let's go ahead and go into edit mode by pressing tab and we'll click three on our keyboard and let's click on a face click e to extrude s to scale e to extrude less s to scale e to extrude s to scale so i'm going to move that up just a little bit and if we go to the top here let's click e to extrude S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale. And then let's move this down and then scale that a little bit up. And then let's extrude this down and move that down a little bit. And there we go. And let's move that up actually a little bit, G, Z. And then let's click control B. And then if you scroll while beveling, you can actually uh, change the amount of uh, cuts it has. So if we can scroll up one, we'll actually have more. As you can see, we'll have two bevels if you were to do that even more um you have a lot which will lag your computer probably if you get that too high but yeah so we have a little bit of a basic shape of a mug if we go back into object mode by pressing tab and if we right click this and click shade smooth we can actually make this smooth now that's actually looking pretty ugly so go to the green button down on the right and go to normals and choose auto smooth and then just change that a little bit. Now we have a little bit of a sharp edge on the mug. Uh, yeah, there, that looks like a good good amount. So let's go back into edit mode. We're pressing tab. This is looking a lot better. Now in edit mode, we can actually add objects in edit mode. So if we click shift A, add a cube, scale that down by pressing S and move that over by pressing G and then X. If we move it up, G, Z, and then S, 
Z, let's scale that down. And then let's just uh, go to the, uh, click this little button up here and we can look at it from this view. G, X, and then let's just move that down. Extrude, G, Z, R, and then Y. Let's do Shift Z and then click and drag and we can actually select through this. So R, Y, here we go. And then if we select through this, click E, R, Y, and then move that over by clicking G, X, and then G, Z. And then if we click E, and then R, Y, G, Z, X. I'm gonna move this on the X axis just a little bit, and I'm gonna extrude that out. Um, R, Y, okay, this is getting tedious, but uh, let's move that in. And then for good practice, let's just delete this face, X face, X, delete that face, and there we go. Oh yeah, we're gonna need to shade smooth this again when we go back into edit object mode. And uh, S, Y, and then let's make this a little bit, so a little bit bigger. So click S and let's move that out. And then uh, let's just bevel this a little bit. So click two, so to go to edge select, we'll hold Alt and then hold Shift Alt and we'll select those and then click Control B and then hold Alt, click Shift Alt, Control B. And then I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. And yeah, so this isn't looking the best, but there is something we can do. I'm actually gonna move the handle up re really quick, but there is something that I need to show you. So scale that up, scale that down on the Z axis. And there we go. So now this isn't looking our best. It looks okay for a game asset, but if we want this to look a little more detailed without putting in any extra work, we can actually click right here on modifiers, which is our next thing I want to look at. So modifiers are really cool because they ought, they help you do things a lot faster and they automatically add things to your mesh. So we click add modifier and then choose subdivision surface. This will actually make it a lot more subdivided for it. It'll subdivide it, cut it up, and it will make it look a lot nicer. So we can go ahead and select it, scale it down. And now that's looking like a nice mug. And now we can actually go in here, add some loop cut, scale that outward. You know, this is where things get fun because then we can actually see a lot happening all at once. It's just a lot faster to work when you use modifiers. Although this will make it quite a bit higher poly, there are fixes for that. So if we hover over this modifier and click Control A, it'll apply it. Now we no longer have that, but have that um, editing, those editing options. But now you can see the full look at what this has done to our object. So it's added a lot more faces, which is not going to be the best for a game. So if we want to go ahead and turn this down, we can add another modifier and let's change this to decimate. And if we turn down the ratio, this will automatically remove a lot of the faces for us and it will mess it up a little bit, but it will remove a lot of the faces. Now, these little mistakes in the rendering are gonna happen, so uh, you won't really notice these on a small mug like this in a video game, but that's what this is for. And there are some tricks you can do to improve how this looks, but it's gonna look a little bit bumpy, but you can go ahead and edit that after you apply this modifier. So I'm gonna delete it by clicking, I'm gonna click X on it, hover over it and click X. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, with meshes in Blender, you can actually join them together and combine them. So if we click Shift A, add a cube, scale that down, move it over, we can actually, this is a bad example, but if we select these both, we can right click it and click join, or we can click control J on our keyboard. And this will actually make it combine. Now, obviously we probably don't want this. This looks weird, but it uh, comes in very handy when you're trying to make stuff and export it to your game or whatever. I'm just going to show you guys how to save and export this. So save a Blender file, you click control S just like any old file. And, or you can also go up to file save and we can save this wherever we want and name it down here now that saves that as a blender file if we want to export this we can click file export obj or fbx is generally what you want to do for game files fbx will export it as separate meshes and it's a lot better for like textured assets and when you have a lot of objects in here you usually don't want them combining if you export as an obj it'll combine all your objects into one mesh and export it uh, generally you want to use fbx for most things so yeah file export fbx and then it also gives us a bunch of options on the right hand side here uh, we can limit it to the selected objects so we can click that and then we can choose this object and it'll only export that if we had multiple objects in our scene and yeah we can click export export FBX and it'll save it. So yeah, see you guys in the next one on how to texture your meshes in Blender and UV edit and all that stuff. That's going to be in the next one, which shows you all of that on how to texture and color your meshes. It'll be on screen if it's already out. See you guys there.